Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be discussing about Metasploit framework for beginners, and we'll be looking at the architecture or the framework of Metasploit framework, and look at the modules that are available inside Metasploit, as well as the exploits and pros exploitation that we'll use alongside Metasploit. And this can really accelerate the pace of how quickly we're performing our penetration testing. And this can be really useful and helpful, especially when we are trying to understand more about how we could utilize Metasploit to help us get access into systems, find vulnerabilities, look at exploits, as well as payloads that are available. As well, on top of that, the post-exploitation, what do we do after we get into the system? Are we able to dump our passwords? Are we able to get privilege escalation? So again, all these are key questions that you probably have if you have been using Metasploit for a while now. So what exactly is Metasploit framework? So Metasploit Framework is a penetration testing platform that allow us to use different modules. And the modules on the right you can see, a module is a standalone piece of code that is in some or in a lot of way not interacted with the other modules inside Metasploit Framework. So you could code those on yourself if you look at some of the template guide about coding your own exploit, coding your own modules inside Metasploit Framework. So that's a great way to start off with, especially later on when you're trying to program some of these features. And we'll definitely be uploading a video about how you could create your own modules, look at some of the exploits that you could potentially look at and be able to use and upload or change some of the code because everything is open source. So Metasploit Framework has two versions. One is, is the pro version, so you have to pay for that. And the one that we've been looking at in a lot of tutorials have always been the free one. And of course, there are some limitations in terms of the free one. So again, if you are a full-time penetration tester or you're doing a lot of security assessments, so highly recommended to go for the paid version. And of course, uh, if you look at the bottom, we have services of Metasploit. So again, if you look at some of the tutorials online, we could see that sometimes people would have to start their PostgreSQL SQL in order to start running the database of services inside Metasploit. So again, this could be because Metasploit use PostgreSQL SQL to actually stall all this data. So again, you have to start those services before you're able to kickstart Metasploit framework. So today we'll cover three key points in the agenda. So first of all is about Metasploit Framework. How does it work? And number two is in terms of the modules that are available for you using Metasploit Framework. And lastly, how can we scope and define the kind of parameters and options that we want to push into the system? So first of all, let's understand three key points as part of Metasploit Framework. So the very first is vulnerability. We have to make sure that we want to find our vulnerability inside the system, inside the machine that we're trying to hack into by using exploits and so on. So this is the part where we have the scanning modules available inside Metasploit Framework that we can utilize. Or two, we could also use other tools like Nmap to find out the service version or the software version that has those services running or to find out what kind of services are running inside the system. So again, if a system is fully patched, have no vulnerability, and then we have to start thinking about zero-day potential as we want to craft out our exploit inside the system. So again, that could be very tedious and cumbersome and could take a really long time to develop. And of course, our vulnerabilities are basically areas or opportunities that we can actually hack into the system. So vulnerability will be one of the key terms that we must understand. And number two is in terms of exploit. So exploit is what happens when we are able to bypass the security mechanism inside a particular service or software or operating system. So again, this allow us to be able to take control of the system, take control of the software or the services running inside our operating system. And number three is payload. So payload is what do we do after we get into the system? Do we want a shell? Do we want it to trigger shutdown? So again, payload come alongside with Metasploit mainly as shells to give us control of the system so that we can do a lot more different kind of commands, manipulation of the system as part of Metasploit framework. So what's the advantages of using Metasploit framework as compared to say using manual way of trying to do penetration testing? So there are five key ways for us to think about in terms of the advantages. So one is that Metasploit is used a lot in a lot of penetration testing tools, a lot of auditing platforms, and it is used extensively to test out companies for their security posture very, very frequently. And as such, having skill set in Metasploit will be very helpful for you because whenever you're joining a new team of penetration testers, chances are they have Metasploit framework running, and it will be great if you are familiar with it because some of the interview questions could also come alongside with that. 
And of course, the great thing is that it simplifies complicated or complex tasks. So complex tasks meaning that you have sequ sequential of actions that need to be carried out as part of your penetration testing. As such, you could use Metasploit scripts to also automate that for you as much as possible. So you can simplify many of these complex tasks together. And you can also put session on the background and use your own scripts to run through and execute inside the current session. So again, a lot of this complexity can be taken out and simplified through the use of Metasploit. Number three is in terms of the range of capabilities that you can use along with Metasploit because it is built in a ordered and systematic way. So you can think of the modules that are available and you have auxiliary scanners and then you have exploits and you have post exploitation. So all these are already segmented into many different modules, many different in terms of the cyber attack chain. How are you trying to work around the system? So again, all this are already audited for you. So it's easy for you to visualize how you, where you are in the attack phase, where which part of the penetration testing you're at, and what is the next step for you in order to carry them out. So there's also a lot of consistent updates. You get a lot of updates as you run Metasploit framework inside your system. So all these updates can help troubleshoot system, make sure the system are running fine and making sure that your exploits are working as intended. So again, all these updates are great for you, especially in terms of trying to make sure that you can perform your penetration testing smoothly. And of course, the great point is there are thousands of modules inside Metasploit framework. And this is really helpful because all these functions have been built by many of these penetration testers and you can use them and be able to accelerate the, how quickly you are performing your penetration testing. And all these tools at and help you find out potential vulnerabilities, exploits, as well as payloads so that you are able to speed up the pace of how quickly you could get into the system and generate those reports necessary in order to find out more things about the entity, the target entity or the target enterprise. So here we got a screenshot of Metasploit. So whenever you're in Colonix or if you have installed it on your Windows operating system, all you do is enter MSF console and you'll be brought into this page. So here we can see we've got 2004 exploits, 109 auxiliary, 342 posts, 564 payloads, 45 encoders, 10 and ops and seven invasions. So again, a lot of modules available as part of it. That could be your arsenal of attack as it comes to doing and performing penetration testing. So one of the key things that I really want to share with you as the number one advice when it comes to using Metasploit framework is to go into the help wherever you are. So it is an interactive shell. So every time you're moving from one shell to another shell or you're moving from one page to another page inside Metasploit framework, go ahead and enter help freely. Enter help whenever you have the chance to. And you can see all the commands available to you that you can key in, that you can enter into. And this is really helpful for you to get yourself familiar with the use of Metasploit framework. So over here in this case, we enter help and we can see all the functions and features and commands that we can use alongside with it. So this is really helpful in terms of trying to get yourself familiar with Metasploit framework. So of course, now we move on into the exploits. So exploits are ranked. Exploits are ranked in terms of how good they are to actually go after the system. So we got a ranking of excellent, great, good, normal, average, low, and manual. So of course, the best option to choose from will be excellent ranking because that ensures that the system don't crash. And because if the system crashes, then that could actually alert system administrators. And if you're doing a penetration testing on production systems, this is highly dangerous. In fact, most of the time, you should always go after penetration testing on lab environment or where the systems are actually mirrored to a separate lab test or a virtual setup where you could actually mimic real life production environment and be able to do all this testing on. So that'll be the number one advice for whenever we're doing penetration testing. So of course, we got the different kind of ranking. So we have to choose wisely what we want to use when it comes to executing many of these payloads. So over here, when you do a search on exploit or you want to show exploits, it will show you the thousands of exploits available. And of course, the first one we can look at is the ID number. So the ID number starts from 1493 or it can start from one all the way to 2001. And we can see the Windows. Windows stands for the Windows Operating System. So again, it could be Unix. It could be any other type of Android devices as well. So depending on the operating system, followed by the service on top of the operating system. And from the service, followed by the service type of service version. So that could be very software driven. So I'll say, for example, you're using a Windows HTTP. So it could be an e-directory, it could be an easy FTP. 
And of course, followed by the date, the date when the CVE, Common Vulnerability Exposure, was released, followed by the ranking of the exploit, yes, no, and the final one is actually on the version number of the particular exploit. So over here, of course, so we can enter show options whenever we are inside Metasploit framework. So once you have selected the use of the particular exploit, payload, or any of those modules, you can enter show options. So show options will show you the parameters that are needed in order to execute this particular module. So in this case, we're using Windows SMB MS17010 PSEXEC. So in this case, we got our host, we got DBG trace, we got link attempts, name pipe, and so on. So again, all this, some of them, if you see on the third column, it says required. So required means it's compulsory. It is a value that you must specify in order to use that particular module. And of course, on the right side, we have the description about the module. And here, all the description about the parameter and the option that you have. So again, very important. If you need any help, go ahead and enter help freely to understand more about the module and all the commands that's available for you to use as part of the module. Of course, this will go us into the payload. So what happened after you're exploited in the system? You want to execute something. You want to execute most of the time a payload. And a payload is usually a shell. So again, there are a number of shells that we can choose from. So if you see on the background, we have Windows, which is the operating system type, x64 architecture, the platform architecture. And then of course, we got shell and we got different kinds of shells. So meter pre shell is the most popular one of all because it gives us a lot of capabilities in terms of penetration testing. But we can also do and get a normal shell of Windows Again, this is depending on the kind of privileges you're going to get or you think that you're going to get as part of your penetration testing. But the most preferred, of course, is MeterPreter. But of course, MeterPreter also has some of the potential items that could be detected by antivirus system or endpoint detection and response systems. So again, all this choosing or the selection of the payload is very important as part of penetration testing, especially if you're trying to penetrate into systems that are highly updated so again all these are things that you want to keep in mind when you're selecting the kind of payloads to go in into so over here we got meter pretty shell so meter pretty shell is a great way in terms of exploiting in the system getting the payload which has a lot of functions and features in terms of post exploitation as well as exploitation so in terms of privilege escalation uploading downloading of files etc so Great way, especially in terms of running many different kind of modules, especially when it comes to penetration testing. So it's one of the most preferred shell if you could get it without detection. So again, this will be a great way for you to actually try out many of these different kind of commands. So again, as advice, enter help the moment you're in session, and this could actually show all the features and commands that you want to see. And from there on, you'll be able to find out things that you can do further and things that you could be limited to, and you have to background session and be able to run all those post-exploitation. So of course, this will bring us to post-exploitation. So the question is always, now that I've exploited in the system, what's next? What do I do next? How do I get passwords? How do I get persistence? So again, there are a lot of post-exploitation modules available inside Metasploit Framework that can help you in that way. So of course, it's a enhanced attack in the target organization. You want to pivot from one machine to another machine. You want to do scanning on the environment. You want to find out what protocols you're using, what servers they have, what services they have on top of those servers. So again, all these are capable in helping you actually expand the scope of your exploitation. So here we got post windows exploit. So of course you can actually do a search on post and we can actually see all the modules available as part of post exploitation. We got privilege escalation and we got dumping out of data, dumping out of passwords. So again, all these are there for us to take a look at. So especially when we're going to tutorial later, we can actually see many of these modules and see how they function and work and what kind of data we can actually pull out from the system. So directly from the screenshot, we could see we could look at post windows managed webcam. We can look at resolving IP addresses. We can look at wireless lists. So again, all these are some of the post exploitation that we could be using in order to find out more information about the system, trying to get privilege escalation. Again, many different items and features that we can look into. 
So there are also a lot of auxiliary modules available as part of Metasploit framework. So in this case, on the right side, we have admin, we got crawlers, we got scanners, and we got fuzzers. So when you go into Metasploit framework, you can search for auxiliary, and you can see all these modules available, or all these subcategories available. So there are a lot more subcategories that you can look at that may be outside of the scope of today's lecture. So again, do explore them whenever you have the time to. So of course, the first one is the crawler. So crawler actually allow us to crawl into the system. So it allow us to crawl through web application servers. It will allow us to find our subdirectory, do a crawling into the system, like how we deploy web crawlers from search engines. And we'll go into the site deeply, finding out things that may be accidentally being exposed into the publicly available information. So again, we can use MSF crawler on that, and that can help us crawl into the web server and finding out all this information. And of course, we also got scanners. So scanners help us scan that particular service, whether it's available, whether it's vulnerable to different kind of exploits. So we have done a number of tutorials about using auxiliary scanner, where we scan the Windows 10 operating system to see if it was vulnerable to eternal blue. So again, that could be the first step you take before you run the exploit, because if the system is not vulnerable, then you will not be able to exploit it. And then you have to start scanning for other items inside the target machine before you're able to run your exploit. So of course, we also got fuzzing. So we uploaded a new video on SQL injection. That was a full tutorial on that. So that was really interesting. So it's fairly similar in the sense that we are trying to fast the service of the system. We're trying to inject code into the system to break it, to get past the buffer and be able to inject things into the system. So we're trying to find software barks. So in this case, as part of the auxiliary modules of fuzzing inside Metasploit framework, we got support for a different protocol. So we got DNS, FTP, HTTP, and so on. So again, all these are ways and areas where we can try to push and inject code into those services to see when we can actually find vulnerabilities inside the system. So a lot more manual effort in terms of checking those systems or services for vulnerabilities. So of course, before we go into the tutorial, the most important question right now you may have in your mind is, how can we write our own exploit and Metasploit framework? So again, we are going to cover this in subsequent tutorials, so stay tuned for that. So for now, let us go into the tutorial of going through into Metasploit framework. So on the left side of the screen, I have Kali Linux running, and all you got to do is actually click on the terminal emulator, and we can actually zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. So I can actually go ahead and enter MSF console. So this will start up the Metasploit framework immediately, just like what we see on the lecture slide. So over here on the lecture slide, we can see that we actually key in into MSF console. So over here, we are starting the Metasploit framework console. So once we're in, we'll be able to see number one, the number of exploits, auxiliary modules, post exploitation, payloads, encoders, and no ops as well as seven evasion. So now once we're in, all you gotta do is enter help. So when you enter help, it will show you all the commands available. So again, wherever you are in the interactive shell, it's great if you have the ability to go into the help page or help command, and it will show you all the parameters and all the commands that you can actually key in into the system. So this is a great way to actually explore and begin exploring Metasploit framework. So a very important way to understand more about Metasploit. So of course, as demonstrated on the lecture slide, we'll be looking also, of course, at some other key areas in terms of exploits. So you can actually enter show followed by exploits, and you hit enter on that. So if you enter show, and if you do a double tap on your keyboard, it will show all the options that you have as part of show. So over here, when you see show, there's a show all, show auxiliary, encoders, and so on. So of course, we can enter show, for example, on exploits. So this would actually show and pull out all the exploits from the database, and it will actually show you what exploits are available as part of your Metasploit framework. So when I hit enter on this, this could take some time to load because it's trying to pull all this data out from the database. So it may take a little while for the query to complete. So of course, likewise, you could see show all, you could enter show auxiliary, encoders, exploits, no ops, show options, payloads, and so on. So again, very important way for us to understand about how we could actually see all the modules inside the system. So show is one of those commands that you will use extensively to actually find out modules that you could look out for. 
And another option that we have is also in terms of searching. So in terms of searching, we can also search specifically. We can search for any keywords, just like how you use any of the search engine. So you can search followed by the type of payload that you could be looking for, exploit you could be looking for, anything perhaps, say, for example, related to Android or anything, example, related to Apache. So again, all these are things that you can actually look out for as you're using Metasploit framework. So of course, in this case, we're still waiting for the show exploit. So now we have the returns. So if you remember earlier from the lecture slide over here on the right side, we have different kind of ratings or rankings. So we got the rankings of excellent, great, good, normal, average, low, and manual. So in this case, when you enter on the show exploits, we can see normal, average, manual, great, and maybe you're looking for excellent over here. Likewise, we can see it over here. So again, we are able to see all the modules information as part of it. So of course, Moving back, we can enter search as well. And perhaps you want to search for Android. So you can hit search on that and it will show you all the different modules available. So if you scroll all the way up, it's actually over here, we can see auxiliary as the type of module that we're looking for. And then we have the administrator, Android, Google Play Store. And of course we got a ranking disclosure date if it's a CVE exploit. And of course on the right side, we have the description of the particular module. So as you scroll down, we can see the different kind of auxiliary modules that are available for you to use. So we have gather, we have gather, we got scanner again, we got a server. And of course, as you scroll down, we have exploit, exploit followed by the operating system type. And then the, the major category followed by the sub category or the name of the particular service that we're exploiting into. So here we got the Android debug bridge. So we actually show Android debug bridge the past few videos about how we could actually be able to exploit them. So again, really, really useful on that. So we got stage fright MP4. So this is a way for actually the user to execute an MP4 video file and you gain complete control of the system. So again, many exploits for us to actually try out and test out on. It's a great way for us to understand more about a system or operating system question. And of course, we got a different kind of payloads. So payloads are basically giving us shell. So we got a normal Android shell. And of course, we also got meter preta shell over here that you can see. So reverse TCP, reverse HTTP, HTTPS. And of course, we got post exploitation as part of the operating system. So we got post, Android getter, trying to dump out hash values. We're trying to get sub information. We are trying to get wireless access point information. So again, also another great one, removing of lock from the remote device lock. So again, many different post exploitation that we can look at as part of Metasploit framework. So moving forward, of course, we have seen all about the exploits. And of course, over here, we can also use exploits. So in this case, I actually have a Windows 10 operating system running over here. So I can enter CMD. So this will show us the IP configuration of this particular this particular operating system. So we got 192.168.1.89. So we are going to minimize this and that is going to be our target machine. And we're going to use Metasploit here to try to gain access into the system. So the first thing I'll use is perhaps I'll search. I'll do a search on SMB because there is a very popular exploit in Windows using SMB or I could search on Eternal Blue. So again, either one would be fine. So there's a lot of SMB over here so I can do a search on Eternal. And over here, we got five matching modules from our search results. So the first one is a auxiliary module administrator. So it would be checking on the Eternal Blue SMB Windows command execution. We got auxiliary scanner. So scanner is actually a way for us to scan the system to see if it is vulnerable to a particular exploit. And of course, we got a number of exploits here. We got two, three, four, and five. So we got Eternal Blue. We got SMB MS17010. So again, we got Eternal Blue, Eternal Blue 8. We got PS Execute. And uh, of course, that is on Eternal Blue Champion SMB Remote Windows Code Execution. We got SMB Double Pulsar RSE. So we can actually enter Use, Auxiliary, Scanner, SMB, SMB underscore MS17. Hit Enter on that. Enter Show Options. So over here, again, if you see carefully back into the slides, we actually have a show options capability. So that is the part where we want to find out more information or details about the particular exploit. So again, we are able to find out those information directly from here by entering show options. So if you see over here, we can see all the show options availability on that. So we can enter it set. Of course, here we can see the parameter that we have a key in. So required no, required no, no. That's a yes on name pipe. So we have already supplied those information over there. And we have another one, our host. So we can actually set our host. 
and we can actually specify the IP address of the target machine. So 192.168.1.89, so go ahead and enter that. 192.168.1.89, hit enter on that, and we can actually see the our host information. Of course, moving forward, we see that the rest of the information has been filled in. So once you're done on that, go ahead and hit run. So again, here we are checking whether the system is vulnerable. So it says host is likely vulnerable to MS17010 Windows 10 Pro 1439x64 bit. So once we have checked on the system, we can do a search once again to actually find out about what exploits we can use. So in this case, we can select number four. So we can enter use, exploit, Windows SMB, MS17010, PSEXEC. So use, exploit, Windows SMB, MS17, 010, EXEC, PS, EXEC, hit enter on that, enter show options. So again, here we will see what other parameters where it is compulsory for us to actually look into. So here we got the DBG trace, which has already been filled, leak attempts already been filled. So we got to fill in the R host. So R host is the target IP address as mentioned earlier, set R host. 192.168.1.89. So in my case, it is .89. Again, in your case, it could be a different IP address. So we can go ahead and hit enter on that. And now we can enter show payloads. What are the payloads available together with this exploit? So again, it's retrieving the information from the database. So here we can see we've got 208 number of exploit, or a number of payloads that we can use. So here we can see Windows X64, we can see reverse Win HTTP. So the one that is going to be the most suitable for today's tutorial will actually be on meter preter. So let's scroll up a little more and see that we can see all the Windows X64 meter preter shell that we can get. So in our case, we are going to be more interested in this one. So this is a Windows X64 meter preter reverse underscore HTTP. So I'll copy the selection. I'll scroll all the way down, I'll enter set, payload and I'll paste the selection from the clipboard. So I can paste selection, hit enter on that, enter show options. So now because we have a payload that would give us a shell, a reverse shell, we have to set the L host or the local listener host name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter IP ADDR to find out the IP address of your Colonix machine. So in this case, our Colonix machine is 192.168.1.91. So go ahead and enter set L host 192.168.1.91. Dot one, dot nine, one. Enter show options again to check all the options, all the values, and make sure that you have key in the parameter on that. So here we got L host, we got the L port number as well, and we got all the parameters set forward in as well in our host. So once you have all this information in place, go ahead and enter exploit, and that will give us our shell, our meter preter shell, into the target machine. So once you're in the shell, meter preter shell, you can enter help. So once again, in help, we can see all the modules available for us, and we can actually see a lot of information, a lot of capabilities, a lot of things that we can enter into. So one example is we can actually enter the different kind of modules that we can use. So there's core commands that we can use. So the question mark also is a way to boot up the help manual, and we can background the current session, we can kill processes that are inside the system, we can migrate and so on. So some of the commonly used ones will be on the system information, sysinfo. So we can go ahead and scroll all the way down and enter sysinfo. So it's very important that you try out all these different commands because it will be very helpful for you to get yourself familiar with Metasploit Framework so that you understand everything about Metasploit Framework. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's lecture and tutorial. And if you like what you watch, remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your queries. Thank you so much once again for watching.